I, 34 male and my wife, 30 female, met at a wedding for a mutual friend. She was one of the bridesmaids and I couldn't take my eyes off of her throughout the ceremony. During the reception, I asked her to dance and we connected. We exchanged information and scheduled our first date with each other for the following weekend. The time we got to spend together was amazing. And I'm confident in saying that I fell in love with her right then. We dated for a year and a half before we got married. It was somewhat of a whirlwind romance and we didn't want to wait much longer. Some of our family and friends thought that it might have been a little too soon, but they knew how passionate we felt about each other. When we first started dating, I had an amazing job. I made twice what my wife made every year with a little more to spare. We had some long conversations after we were married, and we decided it would be best for her to quit her job. She had wanted to focus on building a business of her own anyway, so we thought it would be good for her to do that while I continued working. During the early years of our marriage, we had a lot of conversations about starting a family. It was something that I wanted to do down the line, but I wanted to spend a few years with just my wife. I wanted to travel and explore the world in my free time, and having a child was going to make that difficult. I was under the assumption that she had an IUD and things were being taken care of on her end to avoid pregnancy. So I was very surprised when she was waiting for me at home one evening to tell me that she was pregnant. I didn't know how it happened and she explained to me that it's possible that an IUD isn't 100% effective. I didn't know how any of that worked at the time, so I didn't question it. It took me by surprise, and my reaction wasn't exactly what my wife was hoping for, so she was hurt that I wasn't immediately excited about it all. I assured her that I was excited about having the baby, but it was just a lot sooner than I thought it would be. Everything with the pregnancy went well, and my wife gave birth to a very healthy baby girl, and her lives have been completely different ever since. I love my daughter more than anything in the world, and I would burn down an entire city for her if I needed to. That being said, my wife had a funny way of reminding me how I reacted when I found out about the pregnancy. After our daughter was born, my wife put her business on the back burner to take care of I understood doing that for a little while, but I had had personally invested a lot of money in the business she wanted to start. I was encouraging her to get back at it because I didn't want to lose all the money that I put into it. She was frustrated with me for suggesting that. She saw herself as a full-time mother, and the business was no longer a concern of hers. I was able to sway her to focus on it while she took care of our daughter. Don't get me wrong. I understood where she was coming from but she had been very adamant about me sinking $1,000 into her business before she got pregnant. Wasting all of that was not an option. For the first three years of our daughter's life, everything was going well with us. My wife was running her business, and it wasn't the most successful, but she was earning a modest income from it. Everything had been going very well with my job, and we were even thinking about buying a vacation house. From my job, the company was going bankrupt, and they were making massive cuts. We had a decent amount in savings, and I was able to liquidate some other assets so we could live comfortably for a while while I looked for another job. But there was a time when we were relying on my wife's business to make money. She didn't like that at all. She was angry with me for getting laid off. I could tell that she thought I wasn't working hard enough or giving enough to the job, and that made me the reason we were going through the the troubles we were. She seemed to care less about me while I wasn't bringing in all of the money for the household. While I was unemployed and looking for a new job, I started to notice some changes with my wife. I was home all the time, and she couldn't seem to get away from me fast enough. It seemed like the idea of sleeping with me made her angry, and she was dressing up a lot more than she normally just to run errands like going to the grocery store. I thought she was acting strangely, but I figured it was just the stress of adjusting to everything we had gone through. One day, she told me that she was invited to grab drinks with one of her girlfriends and was going. I said goodbye to her that evening, and she came home drunk around midnight. I asked her about the time she had, but she wasn't interested in sharing too much. She was drunk and laughing, telling me it was a secret. 
I thought she was just being silly and would tell me the next day. When I asked her over breakfast, she said she hardly remembered. I didn't remember her being blackout drunk, so I thought that was odd. In hindsight, it was an excuse to avoid talking about it. I started to worry that something might be going on when she was going out more often with her friends. I assumed she was doing it to get away from the stress of things at home with me there. I never thought she'd be cheating. One night while she was out, I was putting her daughter to bed, and I felt that she had a slight fever. I knew the basics about what to do, but I didn't know where any child Motrin or anything like that was. So I called my wife to see if she could help me. I called her several times and texted her, and she never answered. I understood that she was out with her friends and might not have been looking at her phone, but it seemed irresponsible. If there was an emergency or anything like that, I expected her to answer the phone. She came back later that night and immediately went to check on her daughter because she felt bad for not being there. She was a little bit drunk, by trying to have a conversation with her about what was going on anyway. I aired all of my concerns about her not answering her phone and going out with her friends more often. She told me that it was unfair that I wanted her to just stay home and take care of the kid. She was framing it as me forcing an exclusively domestic lifestyle on her when I wasn't holding up my end of the bargain. We got into a huge argument about all of that, and she basically told me that she was upset that I lost my job. Neither of us spoke to the other for a couple of days as we tried to get over what was said during the fight. During those days, she was getting a lot of phone calls that she would take away from me. I was curious about them, so I stood on the other end of a door and eavesdropped. She was whispering on the phone and explained to someone that she couldn't leave because her daughter was sick, but she told them that she missed them and couldn't wait to see them again in a few days. That wasn't how she spoke to her friends. It wasn't a platonic phone call at all. I pretended like I didn't hear what happened, and I went through her phone later that night. I saw that she had a text message change with a guy that she went to college with. He always had a crush on her, but she didn't reciprocate it. The guy was a highly sought-after lawyer in our area and married. That didn't seem to matter to either of them because they were having an affair from why I saw it in the messages. They were sending each other nude pictures and explicit messages and scheduling times to be together. I noticed from the meeting times they said that they were all during the nights when my wife was supposedly out with her friends. The interesting part of their messages was how they all started. Days after I lost my job, she sent him a message asking if he knew of a good divorce attorney. He asked if everything was all right with us and wanted to help her if he could. She told him that our marriage wasn't working out, and she wanted to get out before things got messy. I had no idea what she meant by that. Up until I lost my job, everything had been going great with us. I had never heard her. I hardly even raised my voice at her, so saying she was worried things would get messy was strange. From there, they started talking about their past and that she always had a thing for him. Whenever she would talk to me about him, she mentioned how pathetic his crush on her was. She made it seem like she thought she was so much better than him and wouldn't even consider being with him. Now she's telling him that she's always had a thing for him. I felt like a fool for believing what she told me. The relationship had been diminishing before my eyes, and I was too eager to ignore the signs. Seeing how her affairs started after I lost my job, but a lot of things in perspective for me. When we met, she was working and had a decent job, so I never assumed that she could have been with me for the money and stability that I offer, but in hindsight, she was very quick to leave her job and convinced me she was going to run a business that she practically abandoned. I gathered as much evidence off of her phone as I could, and I sent it all to myself so I could give it to my divorce attorney. If she thought for one second, she was going to be divorcing me and taking half of my assets, she had another thing coming. On top of divorcing her, I wanted to get back at her for what she did. It was clear to me that she had been using me throughout the entirety of our marriage, and I was angry. I took a little while to think about what I wanted to do, and I came up with an idea. I called the lawyer that she was having an affair with, and I, I had a conversation with him about wanting to sue my former employer for wrongful termination. 
I made it seem like there was going to be a big case that he was going to be unable to refuse. He and I were somewhat acquaintances, so I told him to bring his wife over to our house, and we would have lunch together, all four of us. He tried to get out of it, but I insisted. Before we had our lunch meeting, I had a conversation with my wife about him coming over. I joked around with her about what she said about the lawyer in the past. She started talking about how he was in college and the weird things he was doing all while I was recording her. She said she thought he was pathetic and didn't understand how he landed someone like his wife. It was all just very mean. The day of our lunch meeting finally came, and we all sat around on my back patio and got to talking. I casually mentioned that my wife mentioned she went to school with the lawyer. They both started talking about it fondly and reminiscing. I corrected my wife and told her that wasn't what she told me earlier. I pulled out my phone and played a recording of her calling him pathetic and an embarrassing loser. The lawyer was obviously very offended by it. Then I told him that I Becky wished he knew how she really felt before they had an affair. That caught everybody off guard and both of them tried to deny it. I told them there was no point in denying it, and I knew everything. I also told them that I was in contact with a divorce attorney and I would be making sure my wife didn't get a thing from me. The lawyer and his wife got into an argument, and she ended up leaving by herself. My wife didn't think about coming to me to clarify what was happening. Instead, she went to the lawyer and tried to explain why she said the things that she did. He clearly didn't believe her either. He must have had some inkling of how she felt at the time and hearing her say it finally confirmed it. I butted my head in, and I explained to him that she was only really with me for the money. So when I lost my job, she was probably jumping over to him so she wouldn't have to work for anything. Part of me felt bad for him because I knew that she was manipulating him but he knowingly slept with a married woman so he deserved whatever was going to happen to him after. I kicked my wife out of the house that night, and she begged me not to because she said she didn't have anywhere else to go. She fought very hard to get a portion of my assets. It was very clear that she had one thing in mind during all of it and that was money. In the end, she didn't get anything from me. Not long after our divorce, I actually found an incredible job as well. If she had just stuck it out for a few months, none of that would have happened, and she would have been more comfortable than she ever was. Instead, she had to be selfish and greedy and ended up losing everything in the end. OP, from what you described, it definitely seems like your wife was with you for the money. It's such a shame that it would have to be that way. It seems like you worked really hard to give your family a certain level of comfort and she took full advantage of that. I agree. It does seem like she was manipulating the lawyer to be on her side with things. Her telling him that she always had a crush on him when she knew how he felt about her was wrong. She had one thing in mind when she did that, and it was breaking up a family so she could step in and be with someone who could provide her a certain lifestyle. Her selfish actions broke up two families, and she really should be ashamed of herself. I think karma really got her in the end when she left with nothing at all. She didn't get anything from you and from the way it sounds the lawyer didn't want anything to do with her after he heard the truth. Now, for our next story. My wife and I both met, when we were in our mid-twenties at a club. I was there with my best friend. Let's call him David, and I saw her from across the room. She was by far the best-looking woman in the building, and I wanted to shoot my shot with her. There were so many other men trying to get with her but somehow I was the one she chose to be with. Every day since then, she had chosen to be with me, and I was very grateful for that up until recently. We had been married for eight years, and everything was going well. We put off having children so we could focus on our careers, and we were finally in a place where we could try. Before we started trying to have our first kid, my wife, and I wanted to have one last vacation on our own to sort of send off our life before kids. We invited David and his wife. Let's call her Kelly along with us. All four of us were looking forward to the trip for a while. We were going to the Caribbean and really looking forward to the wonderful views and all the activities we had planned. Leading up to the trip, my wife was kind of nervous about it. 
I didn't fully understand why she had flown on planes countless times before. I tried to comfort her as much as I could and tell her that the trip was going to be fine, but it didn't really seem to work much. The time came for all four of us to leave, and we got there without a hitch and settled into our hotel rooms. We actually had adjoining rooms, which we all got a kick out of first. We made sure to lock our end, so our friends didn't walk into our room, uninvited. Part of me thought that this trip was going to be almost like a second honeymoon for my wife and me. I was expecting it to be a little more passionate and intimate than it turned out to be. She wasn't really too eager about having sex with me the first couple of nights we were there. She told me that she was jet-lagged and just not feeling like herself, so I didn't pressure her into anything. All of us had managed to fully take the time off work for the vacation, with the exception of one meeting that I had during the middle of it. It was something that I could hop on a Zoom call for a couple of hours and be done with. On the day of my meeting, we spent the morning at the breakfast buffet that I left to have my meeting. In the middle of it, I could hear shuffling around in the room next door. I assumed someone just went in to grab something, but I didn't think too much about it. When it was over, I went to the beach to meet up with everyone. Kelly wasn't there when I arrived. It was just my wife and David. They were laughing about something, and I asked him what was so funny but they just told me that it was nothing. They mentioned that Kelly went up to the room to get some rest because she had a headache. David was my best friend, and I trusted my wife so I never suspected anything was amiss. They were friendlier than they normally were with each other while we were on the beach, but I just thought they might have had a few too many drinks already. All of us went to dinner later that day, and I thought I noticed David touching my wife. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. It looks like he patted her on the butt while they were walking by each other. I have been drinking, so part of me kind of assumed that might have mistaken something that happened. I didn't make a big deal out of it. We went through the rest of dinner, and I was a little bit on edge about what I saw, so I wasn't as jovial as I normally was. My wife and David kept looking at each other and smiling. It felt silly, but I was starting to worry that my wife and David were up to something. We got back to our hotel room, and I asked my wife about it when we were alone. I was drunk by that point, and my wife was as well. She told me nothing was happening. I explained the butt path that I thought I saw, and she told me that it didn't happen. I saw what I did, but I didn't want to believe it. I convinced myself that I was drunk and paranoid, and it would be best if I just went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night, and my wife wasn't there. I looked around for her, and I didn't see her anywhere. I got up and started looking for her and saw that the door to the adjoining room was open just a crack. I knew for a fact we kept it locked. So had have been deliberately opened by my wife. I peeked inside David and Kelly's room and saw that Kelly was asleep in the bed and David was missing. The memories of the night before had come back to me, and I started to put the pieces together, and I imagined that David and my wife were off somewhere together. Then I noticed the light to the large walk-in closet was on. I listened carefully for a moment, and I could hear very soft, stifled moans alongside some quiet shuffling coming from inside of the closet. I didn't want to open the door because I already had a pretty good sense of what I was going to see, but I knew that I needed to. I tipped it over as quietly as I could and stood in front of the door for a second before yanking it open. I saw exactly what I had anticipated, but that didn't make it hurt any less. My wife and David were in the middle of having sex with each other. When I opened the door and my wife saw me, she screamed. Kelly jolted awake in bed and yelled at me about being in her room, but then she realized what was really happening. Kelly stormed over to the closet and immediately started screaming at David about what he was doing. She mentioned how she was right not to have wanted to come on the trip with my wife and told him that they were done. I was really confused about what she was saying because they didn't seem hesitant about joining us on the trip at all. I asked for clarification, and Kelly just at David and my wife waiting for them to elaborate. My wife finally spoke up, and she confessed to me that she and David had slept together once before back home. David told Kelly about it because he felt bad, 
and Kelly was able to forgive him as long as it didn't happen again. They both said that it was a mistake and it just happened, and they regretted it. David and Kelly both promised not to tell me about what happened because they didn't know how I was going to react. So Kelly didn't want to go on vacation with the woman that slept with her husband. I could completely understand that. One I couldn't understand was why everybody thought it was okay to leave me in the dark about it. I was the only one who didn't know, and I felt foolish for trusting David and my wife. I thought they made me look like an idiot. I went back to my room, and my wife tried to explain it to me, telling me that it really meant nothing and that it was just sex. I didn't understand how that was justifying anything she said. Sleeping with somebody with no emotional connection didn't make it any better. She still cheated on me, and that was what I cared about. David came into the room and tried to explain his side of everything to me, and I ended up just punching him in the face. I do regret that because it wasn't exactly the most mature way to handle the situation, but I was in the heat of the moment and it felt right at the time. I ended up leaving the vacation the following morning and leaving everybody else behind. I went home to begin the divorce proceedings before my wife returned. I didn't want anything to do with her, and I didn't want anything to do with David or Kelly. Kelly came back shortly after I did, and she stopped by my house to apologize for keeping the secret. Apparently, my wife had promised her that she was going to tell me, and Kelly thought that she did. Otherwise, she wouldn't have ever kept silent about it. I believed what she said. She had no reason to come over and lie to my face about it. My wife and David didn't come back home for an additional three days. I was already upset about the cheating, but the fact that they stayed behind on the vacation for an additional three days after everything happened was infuriating. I can only imagine the types of things they were doing while there for three days alone. I talked to Kelly after they came home and asked her what she was going to do. She told me that she had forgiven him once for cheating on her and wasn't able to do it again. She planned on leaving him and moving out of their house. I ended up divorcing my wife and Kelly divorced to David. My wife and David trying to date each other for a while after everything happened, and from what I understand it ended very badly. David cheated on my wife with a woman from his work and ruined their relationship. I just felt like that was karma coming back to get her in the end, though. I am now happy away from both of them. I do check in with Kelly from time to time by trying to stay away from her because it just reminds me of times I had with David and my wife. But I'm now dating a wonderful girl, and I realize that I'm going to have a lot of issues in my future relationships. But I'm trying to let myself be vulnerable and open again. OP being cheated on is already terrible, and it's made so much worse when the affair partner is a close friend. You trusted David and your wife and they betrayed your trust. It's such a shame that they throw away their marriages for a seemingly meaningless flame they were having with each other. The fact that they had already slept together and felt bad enough about it to tell Kelly then slept together again, while Kelly was in the same room as them is insane. There was a thin door between David and his sleeping wife, and he and your wife didn't care about that. That's just so disrespectful. I'm glad that you divorced your wife and you're no longer friends with David. I can understand how being friends with Kelly is something that reminds you of the times you had with both of them. They were people that you loved and trusted, and they turned their backs on you. And remembering the good times is probably as painful as the bad times. It's good that you're dating again and being open about the issues that you might face in the future. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.